Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the SM001 RC Simulator Joystick by Flysky. Before I get started, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by Flysky, who sent me the SM001 for review. I'd like to say thanks to Flysky for sending me this unit, and I want to remind you that my opinions are my own. I'm under no obligation to provide any kind of pre-look at my material, and I require no pre-approval. Whatever gets put out there, that's what it is. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. The SM001 is a basic simulator joystick. It comes with an instruction card, a little piece of foam on the top, and then the joystick down on the bottom with a USB cable that plugs into your computer. There is no RF tech on this one. You can't fly an airplane or a model with this. It's gotta be connected to a computer in order to work. The SM001 has two different formats. There's a six channel version and an eight channel version. You're looking at the six channel version. So here's channel one, two, three, four, five and six, that's it. These are trim switches, so you can trim your throttle, your rudder if you're in mode two, and then your aileron and elevator again if you're in mode two. Other than that, there's two little LEDs on the front, and that's it, no batteries, you just power by USB. I will provide a link to Banggood if you'd like to purchase one for yourself. They have the six channel version for 33 bucks, the eight channel version for 36. Honestly, I have no idea why anybody would buy the six channel version, just spend the extra $3 and get the eight channel version. And then if you get the eight channel, you also have options for pink and it looks like some kind of green, like a mint green color or black if you want that. I have no question in my mind, I'd buy the eight channel. And then in terms of specifications, real simple. It's got compatibility with APD, Aerofly, Reflex, G3, G3.5, 4, 5, 6, 7, Phoenix, FMS, and others. I found out that it works great with Wings, which is an FPV simulator I use on my computer. Works fine with that. And then it also says compatible models, helicopters, fixed wing gliders, 3D, special aircraft, racing drones, etc. Mine came in a mode two setup. I didn't see an option on the order page to order it in mode one. So if you want to switch to mode one, you might have to take the cover off and make some mechanical adjustments. The data output is USB and it is USB-A and it weighs about 250 grams. So very simple device. Let's get it hooked up to the computer and see how it works. The first thing we'll do is plug the USB-A cable into an open slot on the PC. And you can see we've got a USB indicator light right there on the joystick. The next thing I'm gonna do is launch my simulator. In my case, I'm using Wings, which is a really cool FPV simulator. And I'll show you how to configure the joystick to work with wings. First, we'll go up to settings and then click on controls. And then under controller, just look for a simulator referencing RC Simulator XTR G2. That's the correct one for this particular model. And then click on configure controller. Under controller mode, for me, I'm using mode two. Uh, so I'll hit next there, and it says center all sticks, including the throttle, set the switch position to off. So my throttle is centered, my pot is centered, my switch position is off. I'll go ahead and click next. It says hold pitch full down. So I'll push down on the stick and press next. Now it says hold roll full right. So I'll push all the way to the right with the roll axis and hit next. And then hold yaw full right. So I'll do that with my left stick and hit next. Now it says hold throttle full up. So my throttle is in the up position, we'll hit next. Hold the reset or launch button. I only have one option here, so it's this switch. I'm gonna go ahead and move that switch and toggle that and then hit next. And then move flaps, so I'll use the dial for flaps. It says move those to full flaps, so I'm gonna move it to the down position. And then we'll hit next. And now it says move the rate selector. I'm out of switches, so I can't do that. I'll hit skip and say use keys for that. Now it says move all inputs to their travel limits. So we'll do that real quick. We'll just move everything around. We'll move the flaps up and down and we'll hit the launch button a couple of times and then we'll hit save. When that's done, we'll hit single player and I'll just click on free flight and we'll choose FPV University and we'll just pick a spot to take off. Then to launch the model on the simulator, I just move the switch a couple of times, hit the throttle and I'm flying.
Now I realize there are a lot of different options for a joystick on a computer. The first thing that came to mind for me on this one is something that I could travel with. So if you're out on the road for business and you need something to do in your hotel room at night, the thing I like about this one is at $35, it's very low risk. You can throw it in your, in your briefcase or in your luggage, and you don't have to worry too much about damaging your field radio that you have all your careful model setups on when you're at the field. So that's it. It seems to be a fairly effective little joystick. I don't have any problems flying this basic simulator. I do have a limit of six channels, so keep that in mind. I'll also go ahead and pitch down with the trim, and we should see the airplane start pitching down toward the ground as I trim forward. So a little bit of down trim there. That seems to work okay. And then I'll do a little bit of roll trim. We'll go to the right a little bit, and you can see the airplane starting to turn hard to the right. So the pitch and roll trim seems to work just fine. All right, so FlySky SM001, just a basic little joystick for RC simulators. Budget option, 33 bucks. Awesome for travels. What can I say? It works. I took it out of the box, plugged it in my Windows computer, configured my simulator in a matter of moments. I was up and flying. So I don't really have much to say other than if you get one, make sure you get the 8-channel version. I don't see any purpose on the 6-channel version if the 8-channel is only a few dollars more. I'd like to say thanks to FlySky for sending this unit out for review. I'll remind you, if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know a new material hits the channel. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up, and YouTube should be recommending another video for you right about now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy, and get out there and fly something.